You're listening to the A Bit From Within podcast with Felicia Marty. Being self-conscious of my weight is something that I've carried with me my whole life. I've gained 35 pounds since a year ago. Are you kidding me? Like, how did this happen to me? How did I let this happen to me? How did I gain that much weight in a year? I will remind myself every day that the weight loss, the weight gain, the numbers, those don't matter in terms of my self-worth. I know that I am worthy of love and belonging. Hello there, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to a new episode of the A Bit From Within podcast. I'm Felicia, and this week it's just me. Last week we were joined by the amazing Joanna Sullivan, and if you didn't get a chance to check out that episode, it was so much fun to record, and we've had a great response to it. Um, She and I talked all about uh, relationships, self-love, going to therapy, especially going to therapy as a couple, and um, I was really proud to be able to host an interview like that one. Um, but this week, it's just me sitting here sharing a bit from within. And what I wanted to talk about, I've been gearing up for this all week. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about my struggle with my weight. Now, I want to start by a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, I know that any topic of body weight is a deeply personal issue. Um, it has been for me my whole life. And I know sometimes depending on where I'm at mentally with where I'm at in like being in survival mode or in a place of shame or whatever, I can't listen to other people talk about that because it will just mess me up so much. So I want to kind of hold space for that a little bit and say, If you're not in the right mindset to um, hear me talk about my own struggle with where I'm at with my weight, you know, feel free to skip this episode and join us again next week, or maybe you come back to it at a different time, or maybe it's just not something you ever want to listen to. Um, I will never be offended by that. I also want to make sure to say that I'm speaking from my own personal perspective um, and the thoughts that I feel are about myself and the choices that I want to make, and they are not reflective at all of how I view or see anybody else, no matter their weight, their measurement, their size. Um, I have never looked at another person and thought, you know, oh, they should lose weight or they should do this or that because... I, it's funny when you're talking about weight, oftentimes you can feel one way about yourself and the rules that you have for yourself or what's acceptable for yourself and not judge other people by those same standards, right? It's like the more loving and accepting you can be of other people, you don't always necessarily feel that for yourself. And so I just also want to put that out there because um, I don't want anyone to think that just because I think these thoughts about myself that I would um, project them onto anyone else. And um, the final thing that I just want to make sure just to kind of hold space for is the fact that um, you don't have to be a certain number on the scale or a certain size in order to feel like you struggle with your weight or to feel like you've had experiences in your life that have made you feel ashamed to be in the body that you're in. And that's, I think, the main motivation for me coming today to share where I'm at in my part of the journey because I know from conversations with many of my friends and and colleagues and things that weight is a topic um, that is not only deeply personal, but something that we all have very strong opinions on and and really um, powerful experiences with other people telling us that we weren't the right weight or doctors telling us that or friends making fun of us or that, you know pair of pants that, you know, split on us that we were growing out of as we became adults and the way that stress has affected us, the way that um, we've developed a relationship with food, all of it is deeply personal. And I know so many of us have struggled with it. And so um, I wanted to share where I'm at. And hopefully, you know, I have this, this list of these 10 
new approach commandments that I'm going to share um, towards the end of the podcast that are just kind of my new guidelines going forward, my new, you know, kind of commandments that I can hold for myself um, that I've, I've come to more recently. Um, but yes, I know that um, I am not the only person who has gained weight during the pandemic. And I know I'm not the only person who has struggled with being at the weight that they're at and is who is searching and trying to find their way to a deeper place of self-love and loving their body. And so I thought that I would kind of take the risk of exposing myself with where I'm at on this journey and talking about how I feel, you know, share a bit from within, um, and maybe it'll help somebody else. You know, maybe it'll help inspire you out there, or help you realize that you're not alone, or maybe just give you a different perspective that you hadn't thought of before. And so that's going to be kind of the main topic for today. Um, but, but before we get to that, I thought we'd do a little astro check-in, especially because we didn't get to do one last week. Um, last week on Monday, we were, you know, kind of at this moment where the moon went dark again. So new moon happened last week. And now already this week, we're at this first quarter moon. And, you know, we don't talk about this as, um, as much because I kind of focus more on like new moon and full moon um, parts of the lunar cycle. But when the, when the first quarter moon happens, it's forming what is called an, a square aspect in astrology. So right now, um, the moon is in Leo and the sun has just moved into Taurus. Um, that's another thing that's happening right now. We've, we've set today on the 19th, the day I'm recording this, the sun has left, Aries and has moved into Taurus and is now forming this square aspect with the moon. And what happens during this first first quarter moon is they kind of say that squares can bring challenge. So a lot of times we set these new intentions with this new moon. We have all this momentum to kind of grow and to intend and to create. And then the first quarter moon happens and we might start to experience, experience our first setbacks with whatever we're working towards. Um, it can just be a little bit more of a challenging aspect and that might show up in a lot of different ways. Um, today I feel like it kind of even showed up in the weather. I had no idea I was going to wake up to such a gray cloudy day. I don't know. We had, um, a week before last week that was so beautiful and springy and the sun was shining so brightly and it was so beautiful that I think it fooled me. It genuinely fooled me into what April's really like, which is rainy and cold and snowy, apparently. Um, I mean, I know that, but I did not expect to wake up to such a dreary, weary day is what I, what it has felt like. And um, that has just given me a little bit of a change in my momentum. I woke up with a headache. I think that was due to the weather to... So who knows how, you know, you might feel that square energy manifest this week. Um, And then, of course, we have to talk about sun moving into Taurus because um, what a welcome change. I always feel that way after a fire sign. I I think that's just the part of me. I have a lot of um, water and earth in my chart. And so I'm always like, ah, fire is gone. Yes. (laughs) But I know a lot of you are actually fire signs. So you probably love that fire. Um, Maybe you're more resistant to moving into this Taurus earth sign. So Taurus is an earth element and it is a fixed sign. When the sun is in Taurus, this is a really good time to kind of embrace the the positive aspects of the sign of Taurus, which is being very practical, working really hard, um, liking to chase stability, right? Like it's, it's a time when we don't want to be kind of loosey goosey with our plans. We want to know exactly what's going to happen. Um, you can also think about this time of year, you know, with this idea of, um, you know, spring, moving from winter into spring, spring into summer. This is that time of year during this next few weeks where roots can really start to take hold of the ground that they're in. That's stability right there. And from that, you can really grow and bloom and and evolve and have this firm foundation underneath you. So great time of year to begin to really start to look at what what kind of stability do you want to put beneath you right now? Where is your foundation? And you can think of it as though you're setting yourself up for your future harvest, right? You're planting your seeds. 
you are taking inventory of where you're at, you're getting new ideas off the ground, maybe even. Um, and you might also pick up on a little bit of resistance because Taurus does have a lot of resistant energy as well. Um, it can be very fixed. It wants things to be a certain way. And when they're not that there's resistance. And I think there is good and bad to that in one way, standing your ground and being sure about things, even if they're not going your way is a very um, noble thing to do. It shows, you know, what you want. You're willing to go through the resistance to fight for what you want. In another way, you can sometimes dig your heels in to a losing battle, one that doesn't serve you, one that doesn't serve the cause. Um, so I guess it's up to you to have that discretion of, is this a noble time to dig my heels in or is this a time that I'm just kind of in my ego right now wanting things to be how they are and refusing to see what they could be or refusing to let go? So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, so yes, that's what's happening astrologically right now. Um, and I will also share while we're kind of in this little segment bit that I finally did order some new affirmation decks. So I got this deck. Um, I had a friend on Instagram who had posted a gorgeous picture from this um, super attractor deck by Gabrielle Bernstein. And the artwork is by Michaela Ezra. And I just knew as soon as I saw that her picture of it, I was like, that is the deck that I need to have. So um, at the end of today's um, episode, I will be drawing from that deck. And I'm super, super excited. Okay, so let's get into this story of how I gained 30 pounds over the past year during the pandemic. And honestly, it's probably even a little bit more than that, which I'll share as part of this story. Um, and just so you guys know, I'm not sure if I'm going to be all over the place in telling the story, but I have wrote a blog post to go with this episode on my website, which does tell the story in a little bit more of a succinct manner. But, you know, I don't want to be scripted during this podcast. So I'm just going to be speaking from my heart. And so forgive me if I'm a little all over the place. But I guess I'll start by saying that... Um, being self-conscious of my weight is something that I've carried with me my whole life. In fact, I can remember being on the phone with like my oldest friend when we were both 11, talking about being overweight, dealing with how it felt, feeling other. And of course, that kind of carried through my entire coming of age. Um, I was about between 230 and 240 pounds when I graduated high school and through most of college. And um, while there's nothing wrong with being that weight, I know for me, I never fit into clothes. <laughs> I shopped for all of my senior picture clothing at Lane Bryant, which if you guys know Lane Bryant, especially back in um, 2005, it was not really meant for teenage kids. So my clothes were, um, you know, like woman clothes. And I, um, also in 2005 was di diagnosed with PCOS and I won't go on and on about all of that because I've shared pieces of this part of my life in other episodes of the podcast. So I won't bug you with that, but all of that is just to say that my journey with weight then brought me to this place in 2008 that I really had this light bulb moment where I approached my diet different. And over the course of several years, I really did start to see significant weight loss in my life. I remember the moment that I broke through the 200s and was down into the the 100s for a while. Um, I started doing yoga a ton. I was moving a ton for my job. I was working as, um, you know, a full-time photographer, which I still am, but I was working for someone else. So I didn't have to deal with nearly as much of the stress. And then I was just running around five days a week, taking pictures of people all day long. So, and then I was also living alone with a roommate. So wasn't really in a relationship to have to worry about, you know, eating the same kind of foods as them and you know, I think things just change um, or they can change when you get into a relationship with somebody else for the, the good or for the bad. Um, but by the time I was like 2012 through 2014, I was finally at my ideal weight, which is in like the high 160s. 
Um, I don't mean, I don't know if that's really like the most ideal weight from like a clinical standard, but it's where I felt really good in my body. I was a size 10 in pants, which is the lowest that I've ever been in my life. And I felt like I looked pretty good and I was feeling pretty confident. Like I wasn't obsessed about staying a certain size or whatever. I just felt, I mean, of course I would have preferred to get even lower than that, but I felt like I had accomplished Um, something that felt impossible for a really long time. And so I had vowed to myself then, like, I am never going to go back to gaining more weight than this. Like I have broken through. I, um, am feeling like so good on my body. I'm eating really great. This is just what, how it's going to be forever. And it's sad to me now, actually, like thinking about how confident I was in that, 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 that didn't happen for me over the next, what, six years since 2014. Um, and I'm trying very hard to have compassion for myself because a lot has happened in the past six years and a lot of great things have happened, right? Like my life has really expanded in so many ways. I have I had a lot of, you know, heartbreaks during that time and I um lost certain jobs, but I also started my own business. I became a yoga teacher, I fell in love with Dave, we bought a house together, we've been on our own journey in our personal relationship. And a lot of our dynamic has been around health and fitness. Um when we first got together, we spent a lot of time waking up at five in the morning, going to the gym together, starting our days that way. Um, we were looking pretty good at that point, feeling really good about ourselves. We both have that in common. We've both struggled with being overweight. And so we pushed each other on that. But then there have also been a lot of big life stressors that we've had to deal with. And we both have a tendency to go into survival mode. And Um, it's, it's been hard in my lived experience with Dave for both of us to be on the same page. Cause sometimes like, I'll really try to like make all of the meals and do the certain thing. And then he'll be like, Oh, I'm just going to order a pizza. I just want a pizza. Can we just do this? Or, Hey, let's just get a charcuterie board and let's drink one. You know, like there's so many fun things surrounding food that it can be very easy to just seek comfort Um, want to have fun doing those things, especially when like, you know, things are a little bit more challenging between us. Like we want to connect, we want to connect over food and those kind of things. Um, so that's been a dynamic that's also been happening. And I think that led me to where I was about a year ago at the very start of the pandemic where, you know, I, I think it was a couple weeks after, you know, the, the shutdown start. And I thought, um, or Dave had, um, bought this, this fitness subscription and we had started working out and it kind of kicked off this like health thing between us. Cause we're like, Hey, we're at home. Let's finally do this. Let's eat healthy. Let's get back on track. And so I had been very, um, like religiously would not weigh myself as like a point of principle. Like I don't need that bullshit in my head. I don't need to worry about that. I don't, I don't need to concern myself with a number. I'm, I know I'm, it doesn't matter what I weigh as long as I love myself. Like that's where I was at. And I was like, it's time. I need to weigh myself. I want to know where I'm at so I can track my progress. And I stepped on the scale a year ago and I was right at 190 and it shook me a little bit. To be honest with you, it really did because I hadn't realized that I had crept up so close to the the dreaded 200s mark. And I say that with my fingers in quotes, because these are all just things that we've been told that have been manufactured by the noise around us, right? And the noise that I've believed um, for a lot of my life. And so immediately I was like, oh my God, I need to do something. Like I've gained way more weight than I thought I had. Like I thought I was floating between like 170 and 180, maybe 185, but not 190. So funny how we are with numbers. Like I just shake my head at myself because I realize how freaking ridiculous this sounds. Um, but this is real. I'm sure that some of you guys can relate with this because we all have these versions of weights that numbers that are acceptable and numbers that aren't and all, all this stuff. So anyway, I decided to try Noom out. 
Um, Noom is this, you know, weight loss community and app and program that's supposed to help you lose weight and keep weight off. And it's not a diet and all of this stuff. And so I was like, I'd seen all these great reviews of it got a great introductory price. And I was like, they were like, okay, putting your goal weight. If you follow our program, you will be this weight by July 23rd. And so I thought that's perfect. Like that's enough time. Like hopefully the world will be figured out by then. I'll be in the thick of wedding season. I'll be back in better shape for wedding season. This will be great. I've got the space to focus on this. So when I set my mind to something, I set my mind to something. I am, I am totally in. And so I was working out every single day with Dave and I was tracking all of my calories. I was weighing in every day. I did not miss a lesson with Noom. Like you have to go through these things and like read these different things and take these quizzes and be a part of the community. And I did it all. And I did it even when I was extremely frustrated because, you know, as part of Noom, you'd have to be a part of this community and reading all of these materials and, um, like you'd be a part of this group that would all like talk, talk about different topics. Or you'd have this like coach, you'd be like, well, think about this and do this and blah, blah, blah. And, and I started to get very overwhelmed by all of this. And I, I could see this in myself. I was like starting to notice this like anxious thread kind of running through me, especially because I felt like it was very time consuming. It was forcing me to think about things in a way that I'm, I'm not going to say it's good or bad. It just I don't know how actually helpful it was for me. And so I had been noticing, you know, like I'm not losing weight. I really didn't like the one-on-one coach that I was with. And it took me a really long time, like probably about three months to ask for a different coach. And I wish that I would have done that sooner because I wonder if that would have helped me a little bit more because the coach that I did end up getting was really awesome. I think she was... um, could have been very helpful, but I still hadn't lost. I wasn't anywhere close to like my ideal weight. I think I was down to like, I was like floating in like the one eighties somewhere in there. And I was just stuck. I was so plateaued. You could see it for like four months. I was just like plateau, 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 plateau. And I was also frustrated because I felt like no one in Noom was acknowledging how the stress of the pandemic was probably affecting the weight loss. There wasn't any information about that, any coping strategies, nothing. Um, And I didn't know for sure if that's why I wasn't losing weight, but I also started to deeply feel like I was just broken. Um, Like I can't lose this weight, going all the way back to a lot of these um, old recycled thoughts from when I was a lot younger. And so when that that weight day came around, you know, the very last day of uh, when I was supposed to be my ideal weight and I had to renew my membership and all this stuff, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like I knew is not for me. There were parts, good things that I had taken away from it. I actually did appreciate um, tracking the calories because, um, I do think there is a lot of power in knowing what you're putting into your body. Um, but in general, it was way too much information, way too much sensory, way too much of me pouring this goal of mine into this app, hoping for this result, you know, and it wasn't just the app, obviously, like I was walking like close to three miles a day. I was doing all of this stuff and I was getting, busier and more stressed out and feeling exactly just as far as behind. And I was just like, fuck it. I'm hitting this, like the, the, I'm hitting my fuck it button because I cannot do this anymore. And I realized this when I was writing, um, the blog post that goes with this episode that, um, I had never in my life actually experienced in my own body, Um, the whole like diet yo-yo where like you go on a diet and then you, um, bounce, like you re rebound or, and you end up gaining all of the weight back and then some, um, part of the reason why I feel like I've never gone through that is because I've never really liked diets or bought into them. Um, in 2008, when I changed my 
my diet in terms of like just putting food into my mouth, that, that version of the word diet, um, I had gone into like a restriction kind of, um, food choices. So like I was eating things that would help me stay, um, keep my insulin lower and it really, really worked for me. And I think once I was down, I, I kind of started to maybe just slowly, slowly over time, forget that I really am insulin resistant and kind of start eating more of those foods that cause me to gain weight. But I was in denial about it because I had felt like I had moved past it. So anyway, I'm, at, I'm in this after uh, post noom zone of my life. I mean, I flash back to, you know, August, September of last year, and I can deeply realize how much stress I was feeling just with Dave working from home for this job that was very difficult for him. Um, There was a lot of going on in our relationship, living now full time with one another, working from home trying to do more weddings, trying to do to get him into more weddings, trying to figure out how I was going to sustain my, my business, like my wedding photography business during the pandemic, when everyone's postponing their weddings, everyone's wondering if they should cancel. I'm dealing with all of the reschedule work. I am feeling the weight of everyone struggling through the pandemic. I'm trying to figure out how to still teach yoga to people. I'm going through the pain of losing Asana, my the yoga studio that I taught at, um, and knowing how much it affected all of my like best friends from that community too, and my best students. Um, it was a very, very hard time. And so I was just like, mentally, I was like, I still cared about losing weight, but I was just like, I have to let this go. And I need to just focus on being in my body, eating what I want within reason, right? Like eat what you want within reason, but stop counting everything. Stop weighing yourself. Just stop. And then I never re really reevaluated where I was at. And so I was in totally, just totally in denial about the fact that, you know, skin was coming out of places in my clothing that it wasn't before. And I I can look back now and, re- and see things different in hindsight. Like I remember the first time that I had uploaded a yoga video because I do a new, teach a new, um, teach and film a new yoga class each week and then post it online. And I remember somewhere like four or five months ago that I like saw myself and I was like, whoa, like, I don't remember looking like that, you know, before, but maybe I'm just having an off day. Maybe I'm just really bloated today. And then that led to me just not really trying to, trying to not look at myself as much as possible, trying to, you know, just kind of brush it off. And there's, there's just been, there's been so many moments along the way. And it finally hit me maybe like, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, I like looked in the mirror and I saw the same face that I had as a teenager. And it kind of hit me all at once. I'm like, my face didn't used to look that way. Not, not recently, you know, like me, not like when I was my, in my ideal weight. And I thought, okay, I, I need to, you know, hit the ground running again with really working on, on losing weight because I'm definitely up. And Dave, you know, Dave and I are kind of going through this together and he is also definitely in a place where he's starting to feel a lot better after all of the stress that he's gone through. So he's like, you know, we could be in this together. I'm really ready to look at what I'm eating. I'm ready to make different choices. Like let's be in this together. Cause we've, we kind of both acknowledged that we've been off at different points of time, like where he'd be ready to do it. And I wasn't, and then I'd be ready to do it. And he wasn't, and we're like, like we're in this together. And so he's been weighing himself. And I told him, I was like, I'm not going to weigh myself. Like, I know that I'm going to see a number. It's going to spiral me. I, I don't want to go through that. Like, I just need to focus on, you know, tracking my food and, and work, working on moving and, and, and that's it. And he had kind of pushed back on me a little bit, but not too much. He was just like, I, you know, I, I do think it's important to know where you're at and, and whatever. And I'm like, uh, nope, nope, definitely not. And I, I kind of, left that conversation realizing I'm like, oh my God, there's so much fear inside of me. There's so much fear inside of me over this number. 
whatever this number is, I'm, I am so scared of it that I do not want to face it. And when I realized that I was, I realized, okay, I need to know what that number is. And so one afternoon I walked into the bathroom, got on the scale and 225 pounds flashes. And instantly my eyes welled up with tears. My heart started racing. I got all sweaty and I, I just fell apart. I just, I, I could not believe that since that I've gained 35 pounds since that noom number a year ago, 35 pounds. Are you kidding me? Like, how did this happen to me? How did I let this happen to me? How did I gain that much weight in a year? Oh my God. Like so much comes up for me. So much shame, so much disbelief. Um, and you know, the first day, like I, you know, I, I, I told Dave, I wouldn't tell Dave the number. That's how, that's how far I've come in a week and a half now is that I went from not even being able to say that number to Dave that day to apparently telling the entire world how much did I weigh. But, but part of the reason that I have come to that is because I know that a number does not make or break you. And I also know that not talking about it keeps shame inside and that breaking through shame is talking about it. And that is why I'm doing this. So, um, needless to say, seeing that number triggered a whole series of chain events in my life. It made me realize that I still have so much, and I'm going to put it in quotes, like fat trauma living inside of me, um, from doctors who looked down on me or who, when they weighed me, kind of gave me that knowing look or like careless, horrible, discompassionate healthcare providers that made me feel like I was less than because of how much I weighed especially when I was a vulnerable teenager. Um, it doesn't matter what age you are though. Like anybody who talks down to you that way because of a number or like they're missing you and you matter. And I know that on a head level, but, um, actually knowing it on a heart level and a gut level and working through that is a a whole different thing. And so I really realized, I'm like, okay, we still have all of these, um, like major negative cognitions and pain and trauma inside of us that this is the opportunity to deal with that, to resolve it, to heal it. And so that's kind of how I'm trying to look at it in a, I guess, more positive light is that this really is a beautiful opportunity to do that and to heal this place up. Um, I also have had all of the feelings and and that was the first thing I told Dave, as I said, he, he kind of bounced right into that mode of like, it's okay. We're going to do this together. And I was like, I know, but I need to have feelings about this because I am mad and I am distraught and I am sad and I am pissed and I am frustrated and I am grieving over this number because I never thought I would be back here again. And I feel like I let myself down. And I remember how hard it is to lose weight and how long it took me. And I feel distraught that I have to be on that journey again. And that's, that's the truth. Like it is, I, I, and I told Dave, I was like, I'm going to feel how I feel about this because not feeling it has never actually helped me before. And the other thing that I realized is just like, it's time to figure out how to really do this long term for good, like really, really change the way that I approach and really look at what have I learned over the past 15 plus years that I've been dealing with this through the successes and the failures. Where have I won? Where have I lost? What works for me? What doesn't work for me? And how can I view these things differently? So that way, when I hopefully 
bring children into this world, one, I can gain weight safely to be pregnant and then safely lose it again if I choose to, if I feel like that's when and if that's right for me. Um, But most importantly, so that once I do have children, that I can be in such a good place that I never project any of this shit that I've gone through with weight loss onto my children. Because we learn it from our parents. I mean, I love both my parents, but both my parents have struggled with weight and both sides of their family have have different um, versions of struggling with weight too. And it did impact me and it did affect me. And I did see that and I did learn lessons about what was an appropriate weight or what kind of weight was attractive. I did learn that from my family of origin and I don't want my kids to have to learn that from me. I don't want them to. So in order to do that, I have to work through it and I have to know what works. So I have come up with 10 new approach to loving my body commandments And I could probably find a better name for that. Maybe it's 10, you know, weight loss with love commandment commandments or something like that. Or maybe it's just 10 new approach commandments. Um, But I'm going to share these with you. And then I'm also going to create a little graphic for these. So if you want to read them, you can read them on my blog. Or if you want to, I'm also, I think, going to like kind of design it into a really beautiful um, digital art that can be, you know, downloaded so you could keep it on your phone or you could, um, print it out if, if this resonates with you. So who knows, maybe I'm, I'm being really grandiose in my thinking there. Maybe this will just work for me. And, and if so, then that's good enough. So the first, these are not in any particular order. I think they all matter. So in no particular order, the first, uh, new commandment is, I will acknowledge all of my feelings, feel them, and honor them every day. And I think that is extremely important when it comes to this new approach because not dealing with our feelings is such a big reason that we turn to food to cope or we shove our feelings down or we disregard how we feel about things. And it is absolutely part of this entire well-being um, package. So I will acknowledge all of my feelings, feel them, and honor them every day. Second one, I will make decisions for movement and eating that are logical, reasonable, and as scientifically backed as possible. And the purpose of that is to keep myself from going to that emotional place with decisions. So having that fuck it moment and then just eating all of the high insulin foods that have, you know, led me to this place in my body. Um, and also not overestimating, um, the amount of calories that I'm burning or, um, the calories that I'm eating. Um, just really trying to get to a place where it is not, emotional, the decisions that I'm making, even though this topic is so emotional, this topic is extremely emotional and personal, but the decisions that I make don't have to be based in that emotion. They can be based in reason. Um, the third one is one I feel really passionate about. It is, I will stay away from any diet or weight loss fad, and I will also deem such as dangerous to my well-being. And I really feel that after what I went through with Noom, because even though it is not a diet for me, it was a, it it was kind of like this weight loss fad that promised a certain thing. And I experienced that yo-yo effect. And I also feel so passionately about that because I think it's so easy for us to be swayed by, oh, I'm going to do keto. I'm going to do paleo. I'm going to do a whole 30. And while there are many elements of that, I think that have worked for a lot of people. I think most of us are just grappling, absolutely grappling for any golden ticket that's going to work for us to be that magic solution to dropping pounds and, and moving towards our ideal body. And for many of us, We don't understand what's actually happening to our body during those things. We can't sustain it long term. Um, We're just kind of bouncing around grappling. And I don't, I don't want to do that. And for me, I don't want to be swayed by that. I don't want to have somebody say like, oh, I'm doing this program and then think to myself, should I do that too? 
Am I, is that going to work for me? Because no, I'm not going to do that. And that's not for me. I'm not going to buy into that, that that's not going to work. It's not going to be good for me on a mental or physical level. Um, fourth rule commandment here, I will have fun moving my body. This is a big one for me because, um, let's be honest, not all body movement is created equal, nor does what has worked for us in one point of our life work in the next point of our life. So I will have fun moving my body and I will, and I say moving my body instead of exercising for a very important and intentional reason, because I want to view it as moving my body, expressing my energy. I love to dance. I love to walk. I love, um, kettlebell programs. I love the steel mace program that we have. I want to enjoy moving my body and that is going to be essential for me. And to, especially to view it that way. And I even actually ordered one of those, um, like desk treadmills that can go underneath your, your desk. And so that way I can incorporate more walking into the amount of time I'm going to be spending at my desk, especially this summer once weddings start with editing. Um, and I think that's going to be amazing for me. And it, it actually took all of this for me to realize like, yeah, the reason that I'm not out walking three, you know, miles a day or doing whatever is because I am constantly feeling like I don't have the time to do that, nor do I love the neighborhood that we're in. Um, there's a park that I walk with my cousin that I do. I do love that park and I have some parks close by that I like, but, um, when I lived in different places, um, in my life, I definitely felt more compelled to be out in nature and I don't feel that way where I live. And so I was like, I have to reckon with this and stop battling this and just say, I'm going to choose something else that I know I will, will get me moving um, here that I will enjoy moving my body in that kind of way. Commandment number five, I will weigh myself at least once a week because I never want to be shocked by what's happening with my weight ever again. I don't want to wait until I get to the doctor and realize how much I've gained. I don't want to go through that moment with um, um, a nurse or a doctor. Um, I also don't want to do it here in, in my bathroom and feel my eyes well with tears, realizing that I've gained 30 pounds. Um, I never want to go through that again. And so I think by weighing myself at least once a week, it gives me a chance just to have the knowledge of where I'm at with my body. And I'm not weighing myself to judge myself. I am only weighing myself to know the truth about my weight. That's all. That's And that's the way I'm, I'm looking at it is this number does not, it cannot define how I feel about myself or my worthiness. It is just a, a, a fact. Um, number six. I will track my food before I prepare, order, or eat it so that I have the power to make food decisions based on facts beforehand. And I think the reason that this is so important is because um, over the past, you know, when I have been calorie counting or calorie tracking, I have, you know, like ordered something like, let's say I choose, go out to like a Thai place and then I, I eat some pad Thai. And then I put pad thai into the weight loss thing. And it's like, you ate 900 calories and now I'm over my calories and it's the evening. And I don't, I, I don't know if I can, you know, burn 500 calories by, by working out in my, uh, room the rest of the night or my house. Um, nor do I feel like I, now I'm exhausted and now I'm beating myself up. That is, that is why it's better to put your food in beforehand because if I see that 900 calories, and I just pulled that number out. I don't know if that's actually true for pad thai. But if I see that number and I say, okay, you know what? I can eat half of that. And then I can actually eat some grapes or make a salad. And then I can be sustained, but I'm not, but I get to make that choice. Um, same thing with like choosing to eat a donut or a cupcake or something like that. I mean, last week, you guys, I'm a sucker for a deal. I'm definitely a sucker for a deal. And there are these red velvet cupcakes that I, along the way over the past year, have fallen in love with at King Supers. 
And so the other week, last week when I was shopping, they not only were, did they have these red cupcakes, I shouldn't have even looked at them, but the sales sticker is what caught me. They were on a manager special for like a dollar. And so I was like, you know what? I love this cupcake. I want this cupcake. So before I bought it, I checked the calorie count. It was 370 calories for an entire cupcake. And so I thought, you know what I could do is I could cut this in half or I could even cut it into a fourth and I can reward myself with it. So I could say, Hey, after you work out, you get to eat your quarter of this. And I loved it. It was perfect. It was like the entire, you know, quarter of it was less than a hundred calories. It was so satisfying. Um, it was more than enough to satisfy my sweet tooth. I didn't feel like I was missing out on anything and it didn't, didn't ruin my calorie goal for the day either. Um, it really, it really worked. And so that is why I made that as part of the rules. I just think if you're going to approach this without the emotional decision, we know that you can lose weight by being in a calorie deficit. And there are so many apps out there like lose it or my fitness pal, um, that can help you kind of like the, you know, idea of Noom just to look at the facts How many calories are you burning? How many calories are you eating? You know, all of that. And of course, a nutritionist can help you even more, you know, learn your metabolic uh, fasting rate. Is that what they call it? Anyway, I've never been able to to do that and I definitely can't afford that right now. Um, But I think if we can make decisions based on fact and most importantly, keep ourselves in a place of power. I have the power to decide how many calories I'm I'm eating each day. I get to choose what snacks I have, how much I have, how much dinner, what's important to me. I want to stay in that place. So that's that's that rule. Or not, I keep calling them rule. These are not rules. These are commandments. Um, <laughs> the next one is. I will prioritize keeping my stress lower by implementing pranayama practices, daily movement, communicating effectively, and consciously checking in with my emotions and how I'm handling them. So kind of like the first one in terms of feeling all your feelings, but taking it a step further by understanding that I have to keep my stress lower so that I have a chance here. Um, when your body has all of that cortisol running through it, like we just don't have as much of a chance. And I don't, I know that I can often put myself into a place where like, I'm like, I'm not stressed. I'm fine, but I'm, I'm not fine. I'm, I'm under operating under a lot of stress. And I do know that if I, um, embrace, my breathing practices, if I have fun with the movement and if I really check in with myself each day, am I actually communicating my needs? Am I being vocal about the things that are, are becoming too much for me? Am I saying yes to too many things that I should probably be saying no to? I have to have a new level of responsibility to speak up for myself because of the why, because I need to keep my stress lower. It is a thousand percent worth it. Um, so I also think that's going to manifest in some interesting ways moving forward, especially the busier that we get, because I'm going to have to really figure out how to keep my stress low. And I think that's something we all need. Um, okay. Three more to go. This, um, eighth one is I will not restrict any food or food group unless I have felt the effects of them in my body and choose for myself not to eat them anymore. So this goes to a place where for a long time I was like, I can never have sugar. I can not eat dairy. I can not eat such and such. Um, I just don't want to operate from that place. I want to move from a place of personal power. So if I eat dairy too many days in a row and I start breaking out and I, I choose to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to not eat dairy for a while because I'm seeing this effect in my body. And I want to see if this helps my acne or if this helps with my brain fog or whatever, then I'm choosing that for myself. But I'm not restricting any food group just because some book told me, hey, don't eat legumes or hey, don't eat uh, meat or hey, don't eat eggs. There's so much of that shit that goes around that's like, eat this and not this, eat that. And it's like, "Mm -mm, just 
block out that noise for a little bit and really work on developing that inner voice of what works and what doesn't work. And if you're working within, you know, tracking your food, then, then that is going to work for you. Or at least that's, that's my hypothesis. Um, number nine, I will remind myself every moment that my worth is not tied to my weight, my measurements, nor my success or failure with losing weight. I feel like that one's so important. I'm going to read it again. I will remind myself every moment that my worth is not tied to my weight, my measurements, nor my success or failure with losing weight. I think that one's so important because that's what it all comes down to, right? Is feeling though as though because I'm, you know, in the 220s that I'm a this kind of person or I am not as worthy of posting a picture of my body doing yoga on Instagram, which I already know is complete crap because I have seen people of all shapes and sizes that look absolutely gorgeous doing their yoga. And it's, it's, I know it's not about that, but, um, there's just so many of those, um, negative cognitions that are tied to that. And I, will remind myself every day that the the weight loss, the weight gain, the numbers, those don't matter in terms of my self-worth. I know that I am worthy of love and belonging and that I need to keep working on that relationship with myself. And finally, the last rule is I will not give up because we know what happens when we do that, right? None of this is worth giving up for. And that's why I love all of these rules because they don't even have to be just for losing weight. They could be long-term. They can work even once you are at your ideal weight. Um, You know, you can track your food as far as like being on a, a calorie deficit, trying to hit a certain number that will help keep you in that calorie deficit so that you lose weight. But you can also track your food to keep you at a place where you can maintain your weight you know, by eating X amount of calories a day, you're going to maintain your weight. And then you, you do that and it happens and you can be satisfied. Um, but I, I think that so many of these rules are also just about staying in a place of personal power. And that's important for all of us to feel as though we actually have control over our life with how we're moving through the world and how we're dealing. Um, so that's it. That's it. You guys, uh, that is my very long story. Um, and I guess plan of how I have gained 30 plus pounds during this pandemic and how I am, I am choosing to move forward. And I, I want to make that very clear that I think that choose, this is a choice for me to choose to lose weight because I want to. I also think that I could have easily come to this place in my life where I'm like, I love the size of body that I'm in. I'm going to, I'm going to buy some more clothes that fit a little bit better and I'm going to own the weight I'm at and, and just rock it. And, and that would have been just as good of a choice if that's what I wanted for myself. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think we all need to do what we need to do to love ourselves, to make choices that work for us. And, um, Stay out of those places of shame, right? That's what it's most important. Um, If this resonated with you, please let me know. Um, If this, you know, has inspired you, check out the commandments or check out my website to to get your copy of these these commandments. Um, And most importantly, just know you're not alone. If you've gained weight or you're struggling with where you're at, you're not alone. You've got this. So, all right, you guys, let's pull a beautiful card from this super attractor deck. Wow. Oh my God. It says, feeling good will bring me far more than whatever I thought I needed. Feeling good will bring me far more than whatever I thought I needed. Ooh, I'm fighting off tears in my eyes because isn't that the truth? 
I, I don't even know how to say it better than that. But it's true that feeling good will bring all of us further than anything we, we would have thought for ourselves, right? It's all about feeling good. And that is in, a, in our bodies, in our hearts, in our minds, in our communities, on our social platforms, in our jobs. Feeling good is what matters most. And guess what? Feeling good is going to attract more feelings of feeling good. So let's, let's prioritize that, right? All right, you guys, I really want to say thank you for joining me today. Um, tune in next week for a new episode. Uh, check out the Patreon if you haven't had a chance to. Um, the Patreon sh- has ad-free episodes of this podcast, new moon and full moon guides, um, weekly meditations, a huge library of gentle yoga classes, and so, so much more. So... Um, Until next time, thank you so much for being here and sending love and light your way.